Mom just dropped a bombshell on me. Apparently, you're walking down the aisle soon. Spill the beans, sis. Who's the lucky dude? What's he all about? I need all the juicy details ASAP. Wait, she told you already? I literally just announced it a couple of minutes ago. Haha. <laughs> well, I guess I'll let her do the talking for me then. The big day is happening in about three months, so mark your calendar. I better see you there, all dressed to impress. Oh, and don't forget to bring your lovely wife, Nancy. It'll be great to catch up with her again. Oh, no worries. There's no way I'd miss your wedding. But seriously, what kind of guy is brave enough to marry someone like you? He's gotta have some serious guts to handle all that comes with it, you know? Wait, hold up. What do you mean by that? It sounds like you're making it out to be some dull, tedious task to marry me. Come on now. Don't go trying to annoy me. Getting hitched is supposed to be a time of pure joy and celebration. I don't want anything or anyone ruining my mood. Got it? All right, all right. No need to get all sentimental on me. You always take things way too seriously. It was just a little joke. No harm intended. <laughs> but hey, gotta admit, if you waited any longer, finding someone else might have been a real challenge. What are you getting at, Sean? You're already 29 this year, right? Let's be real here. No guy in his right mind would willingly marry someone past the ripe age of 30. I'm just stating the obvious. You managed to scrape by and find someone just in the nick of time. If you had left it any later, you'd be stuck in a desperate hunt for some poor soul who actually loves you. <laughs> the struggle would have been real. Wow, looks like you're using my marriage as a chance to throw insults my way, huh? It's funny how you pretend to be happy for me, yet you haven't uttered a single congratulations. You can say whatever you want about me. I can handle it. But let's make one thing clear. Don't you dare say a word about my husband. He doesn't deserve your nastiness. And hey, remember, he's going to be your brother-in-law. You better show him some respect. So enlighten me. What exactly does my oh-so-lucky brother-in-law do for a living? The only guys desperate enough to marry someone like you must be bottom-of-the-barrel types, like garbage men. Does he even have any credentials worth mentioning? Or maybe he's just like you, failing to land a decent job and settling for a gig as a cashier chick at Walmart. <laughs> the irony. Don't be so rude. You haven't even met the guy. And you go to make assumptions about him? Oh, please. I've known you since day one. Let's be real here. You couldn't snag a guy with serious cash unless he's a big shot like myself, making bank at some major corporation. Unless he's pulling in some serious dough. I highly doubt he can handle the task of supporting both you and himself. Oh, here we go again. Same old arrogant snobby brother I've always known. When will you ever stop flaunting your superiority? It's like you wear your job title, like some kind of fancy badge of honor. Don't you have anything else in your life that you're actually proud of? Oh, I'm thrilled you asked. Not only am I loaded with cash, but I'm also blessed with astonishing good looks and unmatched talent in every damn sport. Can you even comprehend the perfection? Let's face it, there's only one scenario where a guy would even consider picking you up. So spill it. Was he one of the Walmart cleaners? Or maybe he's just another cashier struggling to make ends meet? Sorry, you couldn't be further from the truth. Alright, let's dive into the details a bit more. I gotta ask, how old is this dude you're marrying? He must be ancient to choose someone like you as his wife. Nope. He's only one year older than me. <laughs> now that's the funniest thing I've heard in a while. You guys truly are a match made in misery. 
We've got a sorry sap in his 30s settling for a similarly pitiful woman on her way to 30. It may not be a fairy tale romance, but hey, it really makes sense, doesn't it? Oh, and speaking of your sad state, do you even have the means to fund this wedding? Don't tell me you're planning to beg your dear brother for a handout. News flash, sweetheart. You can't finance a wedding ceremony with your measly Walmart salary. I hope you actually thought this through, but I highly doubt it. Ugh! You just can't resist poking fun at me, can you? Can you for once try to be happy about my marriage? I'm still waiting for a simple congratulations from you. Where do you even get the idea that we're some sad, penniless couple? You don't know a thing about the guy I'm marrying. So quit assuming the worst. Let's not forget that you're still mooching off our parents, living it up in their house. If it weren't for them, you'd be out on the streets, begging for shelter. You're just using them to save up some cash so you can eventually buy your own place, right? I bet you dream of being like me someday, waking up and fantasizing about owning your own house. But guess what? Unlike you, I made it happen with a snap of my fingers. Just like that. I mean, you do live in a mansion, but you weren't able to get that easily. I know you're paying off a 25-year loan. It's not as great as you're making it out to be. Oh, don't be so jealous. You couldn't pull off something like this even if you tried. Who in their right mind would give a loan to a bunch of broke folks slaving away at Walmart? You really have to stop putting me down to make yourself feel better. Do you have some sort of prejudice against people that don't work like you do? Was there ever a time I put you down? And don't put down Jack either. Oh, you just slipped up, sister? So that's my new brother-in-law, Jack? I am feeling sorry for him already. Whatever, Sean. I bet from his point of view, you'd be a sad side as well. You've put me in a sour mood. I'm going now. See you and Nancy at the wedding. Yo sis, when are you gonna tell me about Jack already? I've been waiting for your messages for a freaking eternity. Like two whole weeks. Get it together and give me the scoop already. Don't pretend like you care. You're just using that as an excuse to gather more ammunition so you can continue ridiculing him. Come on, just tell me more about him. As a man of such high value and worth, I'm sure we'd have a ton in common. But I probably shouldn't get my hopes up. Knowing your luck, he's probably just some grimy, exhausted dude who's been slaving away on the construction site his whole life. Oh, Sean. Whatever wild scenarios you're conjuring up in that head of yours, they're completely off the mark. Trust me on that. Although, I must admit, he does have some involvement in the construction industry, so you're not too far off. But hey, like I said before, I'm not giving you any details until we get married. So just sit tight like a good little boy and wait patiently, okay? But let me give you a juicy hint. There might be people that you know there you can keep that at the back of your mind instead of thinking about Jack. Now you really picked my curiosity. Who could it possibly be? Don't tell me it's some famous actor or someone I work with at my company, is it? I'll leave it to your imagination. I'm not telling you anything more than that. It could be someone earning a lot less than you or someone earning drastically more than you. Who knows? Oh. We know who knows. It's you who knows. But don't try and fool me. I know no one of stature will be at that wedding. So just how big is this wedding anyway? Don't tell me you're topping my wedding that I had two years ago. Weddings aren't cheap. Just remember, if you fall into debt after the wedding, the chances of you getting divorced are pretty high. You're going to love this. Over 500 people are coming to my wedding. I've only invited a couple of people, 
Most of the guests are colleagues and family friends of Jack's. Yeah, right. As if I'm going to believe 500 people are going to your wedding. You have to stop with all of this teasing, sister. You nagging me with all these questions is like a bug I can't get off my shoulder. So annoying. You shouldn't compare me to a bug when you already know how successful I am. I'm more like a tsunami that doesn't stop coming. Honestly, Sean, you have to stop all the superiority nonsense. We all know you're secretly self-conscious. Don't think we forgot about you struggling to find yourself a job. Also, lay off Jack, won't you? You have no idea what type of work he's involved in. He could be working hard labor, making our roads for all you know. If he's some low-level worker earning less than me, I'm going to be very disappointed in him. I'm older than him for Christ's sake. I cannot wait to get a look at this guy. If he is that pathetic, I might find it hard not to laugh at his face. That's the nasty, arrogant brother I've always known. Just remember, you haven't met him yet, so don't make any bizarre assumptions about him. If you're going to make fun of anyone, make fun of me, but keep Jack out of it. I don't want to have to say it again. Well, just think about it. If more poor people start being introduced to this family, eventually it's gonna take its toll on me. I know how poor people work. You'll start making bad financial decisions and you'll come asking me for money. Maybe a dinner here or there or money for gas. So sorry if I'm just looking out for my own skin. If I didn't, I wouldn't be where I am today. What kind of deluded ideas are running through your head? For starters, I'm going to be marrying into his family. You and I aren't going to see each other that much. Oh, really? So you're going to bum off his parents instead? I mean, one day we'd like to move out and have our own place. But in the meantime, we're going to stay at his parents' house. Pfft, typical. So when you're done bumming off his parents, where do you plan to live anyway? We're looking in the area called San Jose, California. What the hell? Have you seen the houses they got there? That's a super luxurious area. You must plan on building some shabby little shack there to live in. Come to think of it, would you even be able to do that if your house wasn't up to standard? Surely they wouldn't let you build in that area. Why do you care where we live in the first place? It's our decision, not yours. You really are grasping at whatever little strands you can to make fun of us. Don't you ever get bored of this? If you're some big shot making a lot of money, how about you leave us alone and keep making money? Don't tell me. Are you gonna cry again, sister? All I'm doing is looking out for you. If I didn't tell you these things, you might make a decision that haunts you forever. I don't need your false concern for me. Just wait for the wedding. I told you, all your questions will be answered when it's over. Jack and I have a lot on our hands at the moment. We don't have time to answer these silly questions from you. Stop prying into our private life. Find a hobby or something and leave us alone. Big Sis! Uh, Earth to Chubby Tiffany? Good morning. Are you even awake? Yes. Good morning. I'm awake. Don't call me Chubby Tiff. I don't want to hear my childhood nickname on my wedding day. Oopsie daisy. Oh, I'm really sorry, by the way. Huh? Sorry about what? The wedding day. I won't be able to make it. They've asked me to come in and play futsal today. <laughs> sorry, I won't be able to make it. You'll just have to enjoy the festivities without me. I'm sorry. Are you kidding me right now? You're gonna ditch me for some football game? No, no, not football. Futsal. It's more like soccer. Okay, whatever. I don't care what it is. Why would you ditch me for such a stupid reason? Are you really gonna sit there and tell me that your football game 
is more important than my wedding? How selfish are you? It's futsal. There's a difference. Anyway, what was I meant to do? I was invited by my co-workers for Christ's sake. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that came up and asked me. If you're in that situation, you'd definitely understand why I can't come today. I wouldn't waste an opportunity like that to go to some wedding I don't care about. Besides, Nancy decided to go to the department store with her friends today. Guess she didn't care about your wedding either. You and Nancy? I've had enough of this. If you didn't want to come, why didn't you tell me that from the start? Do you realize how much trouble you caused me? We could have filled up your empty seats for someone who actually wanted to be there. Where was that pathetic wedding again? It was in the Azure Haven Hotel, wasn't it? You should stop showing off. As your younger brother, I'm extremely embarrassed by it. To think that a miserable cashier chick, no, let me rephrase that. To think that an old grandma that works at Walmart is going to wear a wedding dress and act on top of the world makes me want to barf. So what if I'm wearing a wedding dress? What do you have to say about it? I don't know why you're complaining if you're not even going to come here in the first place. No, don't mistake me. I fully intended to go to your wedding and see you. But these things happen. The timing of your wedding and the timing of my co-workers inviting me just coincided. What can you do about it? Sorry sis, I promise I'll be at your next wedding though. That's it. I've had enough. I know you weren't planning on coming from the very start. I bet you didn't even bother to put it in your schedule. I really wish my only sibling wasn't a good-for-nothing douchebag. Don't bother me anymore. Since you cancelled on us, I have to make extra preparations now. You two dotted off home in a flash yesterday. Was the food that bad? Of course not. The food was great as per usual. I couldn't expect any better of my big sis. Okay, this is weird. This overly friendly attitude is creeping me out. Especially when you two came here. No need to overcomplicate your apology. And you bought me a new pet for my home? What is up with that? It's too much. It's a golden retriever for goodness sake. I don't even want to ask how much it cost you. Well, you know, I guess I have to own up to why I'm being so nice lately. My new brother is a... Uh, hmm... I'm not sure how to best put this. Don't overcomplicate it. I already know now. He's going to be the new company president of the company you're in negotiations with. So you're doing your best to make up for your horrible first impression on our wedding day. Yes, but what would you do if you were in my position? We're talking about a business deal involving millions of dollars. Even if he wasn't going to become the company president, you already know what job title he has at the moment. I sure do. I'm well aware he's a general manager. At such a young age, too. In this current position, there's not much reason for him to move to the sales department where you work. He's had no reason to put his eyes on you until now. His father, who happens to be the current president of the company, gathered all the higher-ups from the companies he's in business with, including the managers of your sales department. Oh boy, this isn't good. Did my manager say anything about my seat being empty? He sure did. You cancelled on me at the last minute, so I didn't have time to fill that seat. I couldn't change the names for the seats either. So when your manager realized you were absent and took a look at your name, he had a foul look on his face. Damn it, this is not good at all. What am I going to do the next time I have a meeting with them? I have to think of some sort of excuse. I've got it. I'll say I had the flu. I'll need your testimony for this. They won't believe me on my own. Tell them Nancy and I came down with the flu and couldn't make it to the wedding. You want me to lie so you can save face? 
Even if people had a bad impression of you now, you're still young and capable of working hard. Will this really have a bad effect on your working conditions? I don't know, but better safe than sorry. Look, we could arrange for a small party between Jax and our family. That way, I could have a couple of words with the current company president and leave a good impression. What are you going to tell him? The one that insulted your son and talked badly about him to his soon-to-be wife? I would never make fun of him. He's my brother-in-law that I have immense respect for. You respect him now? What was it you called him again? Help jog my memory here, Jean. What did I say? It feels like so long ago that I don't even remember. Let's just put it behind us. That's right. You called him some worthless cleaner working at Walmart or just another checkout boy. You also said he must be miserable having to marry someone like me. You acted like you had a pretty good idea of who he was. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said those things. Just make sure he doesn't find out I said those things. I'm begging you. Too late, Sean. I showed him our line conversation a while ago. No. What have you done? Why would you? Don't get all emotional about it. He's a kind-hearted person. He knew you were a part of the sales team that his soon-to-be company is conjoining with. He found it hilarious as you were insulting him with no idea who he was in the first place. You're working for a large company yourself, but it doesn't compare to the scale of the company he's about to take over. In preparation for his new role as president, he's studying imperialism in his free time. That's dangerous. A president who views his position as an emperor? He's going to eat the other companies up. I'm such an idiot for not finding out who he was before taking that way about him. I thought I'd have a chance at outcompeting him. I should have been the one coming out on top. Ha! Huh. Did you honestly think you had a chance of winning him over? I'm in a good position for a good company. Anyone who was in my situation would get a big head about it. Compared to that guy, I'm just the average frog in someone's garden. Please let him know how sorry I am. I didn't want to insult a guy like that. Give it about 10 years and he'll be the president of your company too. In the meantime, he's just an employee, not too different from you. He has the typical businessman lifestyle of running and studying investing trends. Look, if it's running, we might have something in common. But when it comes to investing, I'm a complete amateur. I have no idea how to continue a conversation about that. He's been dabbling in investing ever since he was at university. He's got enough to give me a generous amount from time to time. He must have had a mechaton if he's been investing for that long. I can't even imagine how much money he probably owns. Not only that, but he's building a house in San Jose? This guy is on another level. I couldn't match him even if I had another lifetime. I'm glad you finally noticed. Our new house is going to be built from scratch. Jack and I decided on the plans and the materials together. Feel free to come for some lunch and try to win my husband's favor back. No, I couldn't do something like that. You guys are a newly married couple. It would be imprudent of me. What are you talking about? You had a lot to say before we got married. Now you're all respectful? You gotta forgive me for that. I won't say anything to disregard you or your husband. I promise, don't punish me for this. What are you talking about? Punishment? I don't know. Maybe you'll use your social influence to destroy me or convince my superiors to fire me for ditching the wedding? You'd be in a pinch if you tried to get your payload or something like that. Nancy would suffer the consequences too. Don't waste your energy worrying about it. We won't do anything to put your wife in a stressful situation. Really? You'll have mercy on me? Even if we did want to do that, it's a big hassle. He's general manager, so would have to talk to his dad first. Then his dad needs to talk to the president of your company to point out exactly where you are and how you disrespected us. 
That's what I mean. There's no need to do that. At least wait until I've paid off the loan on my house. I'll never recover from something like that. Maybe we'll wait. When Jack has finally become president of his father's company, he'll talk with your company president himself. At that point, you should have climbed up the corporate ladder quite a bit. The damage dealt to you then will be much larger than it could be now. Are you actually considering destroying me? Please, don't do this. I can't lose my job. My life depends on it. It means everything to me. You remember making fun of me for failing to find a good job? Then after working in a place like Walmart, you continue to hurt me? Well, I've already quit working there, so I don't care what you say about it now. But don't think I'll forget something like that easily. I said I'm sorry. How many times do I have to say it for you to believe me? I got ahead of myself. I was extremely cocky. I won't ever be that type of guy again. I promise. All depends on how you act from this point on. You are my brother, right? How about you be a little brother that your family can enjoy being around? And stop talking highly about your position. It's not that great, if we speak honestly about it. Oh god, fine. Okay, you have a deal. I'll be a proper, respectful adult. You have my word. It looks like you've reflected on your actions and are genuinely sorry. But if I hear about you or your cocky attitude again, I won't give it a second thought to get in contact with your boss. If you don't want that to happen, don't forget what we've talked about today. You got it. I'll be more courteous towards others. Jack's father decided to step down from his position earlier than planned, and after three years, he passed the reins to his son. Interestingly, Jack had already been working in an executive role for two years, earning the respect and trust of his colleagues. When the time came, they unanimously voted for him to become the new president. Now, Let's talk about my big-headed brother. Since the wedding, he's gone through quite the transformation. He never turns down an invitation to go out for drinks with his co-workers after work, and he manages to keep up with them all night long. The last time I saw him, his beer belly had grown so big it could practically honk a car horn. It's hard to believe he was once the slim, athletic brother I knew. As for me, as soon as Jack took on the role of company president, I quickly became pregnant. It may sound old-fashioned, but I take pride in supporting my husband and take my role as his wife and the household manager seriously. Of course. I have my challenges in caring for our child, but Jack is always there to lend a hand in raising our baby.